Hello, everyone, and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday, the 19th of July. I'm glad to see you. Um, I, I get these emails, and I think this one actually came through Facebook, um, but little notices about other people who are inspirational and have these ideas. And there's one that somebody shared um, from Richard Rohr's Daily Meditation called Nothing is Excluded, and I'd like to share it with you. Following the examples of Jesus and Francis of Assisi, Richard encourages us to, in, to inclusive compassion. Francis, like Jesus, refused to exclude things from the garden of grace. There is no exclusionary insect instinct in either of them, except toward exclusion itself. Francis had a genius for not eliminating the negative, but instead using it, learning from it, and thus incorporating it. He goes to, to the edge and the bottom of society. He kisses the leper. He loves the poor. He doesn't hide from his shadow, its shadow self, but advertises it. So much of our religion has taught us to deny or hide our shadow, which forces us into a fatal split from a foundational reality. Just as we grow by ultimately accepting and forgiving our own failures, conscious people like Jesus and Pope Francis are able to say about others, who am I to judge? That's quite the opposite of religion as exclusion. In this person who's writing it is a, a, is a, a jail chaplain. He says, in his 14 years as a jail chaplain, I met people who had done things that are wrong, sinful, immoral, or bad. Yet, when I drew close to a particular life, I found that the human heart is most often either sincere, mistaken, or afraid. From that place, they sought apparent good, but not the true good. It made them do some stupid things. They're suffering for that now because evil is its own punishment. But when we draw close to it, the human heart has a kind of tenderness, sweetness, and littleness, even in, in its fragility and fear. As Scottish minister John Watson stated, be kind, for everyone is fighting a hard battle. Remember, sisters and brothers, Jesus is really saying that we are punished by our sins rather than for our sins. None of us know the, the wounds that every human being carries or why they do the things they do. Human sin, failure, and imperfection are to be wept over and pitied, not something to be abhorred. Franciscan spirituality puts a big exclamation point behind Jesus' words. The last will be first and the first will be last. Matthew, Luke, and Paul's words, when I am weak, then I am strong. Upside-downness is at the heart of our message, always prompting us to look more deeply and broadly at things. This opens our eyes to recognize God's self-giving at the far edges, where most of us cannot or will not see God, such as in other religions, in any, way, any, in any we define as outsiders or sinners, and even to the farthest edge of our seeing, toward those who fight us and oppose us, our so-called enemies. We must grow up to our full stature to find the full nature of God. Small souls are incapable of knowing a great God, and great souls are never satisfied with a small or stingy God. Once we become fully conscious of our ourselves, all things will be beautiful. I found this to be really a powerful message for me because one of the gifts of Church at Home here is recognizing just how strained and stressed the world is when it comes to looking at Jesus and the church and our presumed knowledge of God's mind. I am, I am keenly aware of how much I don't know. No, I'm not. I am keenly aware that I am not aware of a lot. <laughs> And I don't even have a clue what many things are that I'm not aware of because they're not, not coming to my consciousness. I, my mind is, is so minuscule compared to God's that I cannot presume to know what God is thinking. As a priest, I'm called upon to study scripture, to study theology, to pray, to interpret, to listen for God's voice in my life, and then to share what I believe God is saying. But my prayer before I share anything is always that the Holy Spirit will work through what I'm saying. That if I have misinterpreted, that the Holy Spirit will somehow translate my misinterpretation and speak it to the ear of the person who's hearing or the eyes of the person who's reading it. Um, speak the truth, regardless of what I have said. And the fact is, 
my, my, my finite mind can never understand the true wholeness of God. And I don't want to. I, I don't want to completely understand God. Understanding something often takes the shine off it. Um, I remember when I was a little kid, I, my, my dad was a bank manager and I used to love going to the bank where he worked. And it, I felt privileged because my mom and I, and my sisters could just walk right in. We could walk right past the tellers and say hello and go right to my dad's office. So I got to see behind the curtain. I got to see what customers couldn't see back there, the cubby holes and the cash drawers and, and the advent of computers and all of that, all of those things, bowls and bowls of paper clips and and uh, elastic bands. <laughs> and later in life, the hopper, the this machine that would count the money real fast and count into hundreds and they put bands on it. So I, it was amazing. It was like, it was like a dream going back there. And then when I was 19, I was hired for a part-time job as a teller at the Bank of Montreal. No nepotism did not get me the job. I earned it. Um, but I got this job at the Bank of Montreal and all of a sudden I was a teller. And it did not take long before the shine of what, when I was a little kid, was like some miracle world. Once I got to know how things worked and why those elastics and paper clips were there and how much work it took to do things and how, how easy it was to miscount money and realize you have to go back and redo all your work to figure out where you made a mistake. It didn't take very long before that knowing something became a responsibility and not just a privilege. Back when I was a kid, it was a privilege to see behind the curtain, to see behind those counters, to see all those things those wonderful tellers did. It was amazing. And then when I became one, I realized it was still a great job and I enjoyed it. And I loved working with the people and I like working with numbers and the, the, the administration part of it. But I also realized all the stuff that you couldn't see at first glance. Knowledge isn't always comforting. Sometimes it's okay to not know something. So not knowing the mind of God frees me up to imagine, to imagine what God might be doing, what God might be asking of our world. And reading this passage, this, this daily devotion from Richard Rohr, helps me to recognize that, that it's okay. Like, I don't need to judge other people because I can't see behind their lives. I can look at them and I can presume to know what it is they're going through. But I can't know what happens in their homes. I can't know what happens to them when they sit and listen to a sermon on a Sunday morning or what happens to them when they leave church and find themselves jam like like smack dab in the middle of everything their pastor just said, this is evil, or the things that they think are evil that their pastor has said, but they're not. I can't get into someone else's head, nor is it my right to do so. It's not my privilege. It's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to live inside my own head and to understand that, to discover those places where I need inclusion myself. Jesus did not exclude people. A lot of people have told me Jesus didn't create, allow for women priests. Jesus didn't allow for people who are gay or straight or trans or bi. Jesus didn't. You know what? I don't know where you're talking about that in the Bible because Jesus welcomed the sinners. He welcomed the prostitutes. He welcomed the rich who are willing to follow his way. He didn't say to them, you're a horrible, horrible sinner and you cannot come and join me unless. What he said to them was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your behind, with, with like, love God with all of who you are. And if you do that, and if you love your neighbor as yourself, then you will find the kingdom of God. You will be accepted by God. When we are inclusive, when we look at the people in prison or the people who are different than we are, when we are inclusive, I think that is the closest we will ever come to being, to understanding the mind of God. A God who wanted to be so inclusive that God sent God's only son to die for us. To, to be sacrificed, not because God needed the sacrifice, but because we did. We cannot understand what it would mean to be accepted without some kind of an attachment, some kind of a small print. Well, Jesus paid, Jesus read and paid the small print for us. Jesus' death and his resurrection created complete inclusivity. Who are we 
to say to God, you can't include them. Just some thoughts. Thanks to Richard War. He is an absolutely amazing person. His name is Richard and his last name is R-O-H-R. Have a great day. God bless you. And I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.